So now that we know how to create and set up a foreign key within Postgres and PG Admin, we're going to see how we can do this through code using SQL Alchemy. Because ideally, since we're already using SQL Alchemy to generate all the tables, uh, generate all the columns for each table and all the different properties, we should also set it up to the, generate the foreign key for us as well. So we're going to go to the models.py file. This is where we define what the tables are going to look like with the different classes. And we're going to add a new user ID or owner ID column to the post class. And that's going to create a specific column within the post table. And so we can just go here and, you know, call it owner ID, user ID, whatever you want. I'm just going to call this owner ID. And this is going to be column. And then here we have to specify the data type of the column. And uh, as I mentioned, the data type should match up with whatever the data type of the foreign key is. So since this column is going to point to the ID column of the user table, it should match up with whatever is here. So since this is integer, this has to be integer as well. Then to set up a foreign key constraint, you just type in foreign key and then go ahead and auto import that. If you don't know where it's getting imported from, it's going to get imported from SQL Alchemy. So uh, if you didn't automatically do it, you can go ahead and just manually type that out. And then there's going to be two fields that we're going to pass in. So the first of all, we have to pass in the exact column uh, and table, table and column that we want to reference. And so we want the users table and then grabbing the ID column. And so your instinct would be to use the class name, but we don't actually reference the class name. Instead, we want to reference the table name. So it's going to be lowercase in this case. So you say users dot, and then what's the column name? It's called ID. So we say dot ID. And then the second thing we need to do is, uh, if you recall, we have to set up what the policy is for when we delete the foreign key or the parent table. Uh, and so we always used a uh, cascade so that if the parent object gets deleted, all of the child ob objects get deleted as well. So we can do that through SQL Alchemy as well. And we'll say on delete equals, and then we just say cascade. And then finally, we want this field to be nullable equals false. So it has to be filled in. All right. And now if we save this restart our application, we'll take a look at Postgres. And if I actually refresh this, and this is actually an old, an old panel. So I'm going to remove that. And then if I just do, uh, we'll go to our post table, go to query tool. I'll say select star from posts. Run that you can see that there is no actual owner ID column. Uh, and so the reason for this is that uh, SQL Alchemy, when, it, when we start our application, SQL Alchemy will check to see if there's a table called posts. And if there is, oh, sorry, if there isn't, it's going to then create a table based off of these rules. However, if there's already a table named posts, uh, it's not going to do anything. So if we update any properties for a pre-existing table, it's not going to change that. That's not exactly what SQL Alchemy is meant for. Instead, we would have to use a database migration tool, kind of like Alembic, uh, which we haven't covered yet. Uh, so instead, for now, what we're going to do is we have a couple of different options. We can manually just do it, go into PG Admin, add the things yourselves, or we can just take the easy way out. Since this is a development environment, we can just drop our post table. And that's one of the luxuries of working in development. So you can then hit save again, and that's going to cause it to restart the application the application. And then if we go to Postgres and we just hit refresh, it's going to create a new post table. And then we can go into properties and we'll go into columns. And we now see that we have an owner ID column, which is set to not null. That's good. And then if we go to constraints, foreign key, you'll see that we've got our foreign key and you can take a look at the details down here. And the main thing I want to check is for actions, we do have on delete cascade. All right, and so now that we have everything set up, if I just run this query again, we should see the owner ID show up. So let's create a few entries. And um, before I do that, I need to make sure that I actually have some users um, because I kind of went in and deleted a few things. So I've got two users uh, with an ID of 20 and 21. And so what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that the foreign key po points to one of those IDs. So we'll grab a post. I'm going to just set this to be post one as the title. And it's going to be some gibberish. And then we can set the post, uh, the owner ID to be the ID of a user that we already have in our database. We'll save this and we can see that it's successfully created. Now, if I create a new post and this time leaving the owner ID blank, 
If I hit save, you can see that it throws an error because this can't be set to null. And if I try a ID of a user that doesn't exist, like 57, it should also throw an error. And so it's saying that, hey, the owner ID of 57 does not exist in the users table. And I'll just change this to 21, and then it should work. Great. Now let's quickly check out the on delete functionality just to make sure that it works. Uh, and what we're going to do is let's go to, well, I'll just run the query right here. So we'll do delete from, and we'll say users where ID equals, and we're going to delete the user with an ID of 20. So if everything works, we should see just this entry also get deleted in the post table because the owner is, has an ID of 20. And since that owner is going to be deleted, then we should only have this one left. So if I run this, yep, we can see that the one with the owner ID of 20 is now deleted. All right, and so that kind of handles all of the database side of things. Uh, at this point, if you try to test the rest of your application, you're going to probably run into a couple of issues. Um, but that's just because, uh, you know, we've ha hard coded our schema to match a certain, you know, number of properties. And so since we've added this new property to our posts, it's going to throw a few errors. So we're going to have to update a few things in the next video, but you'll see that updating your schema is very simple.